G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. My name is Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy and in this episode we're going to do a fantastic little seascape from down the Great Ocean Road in Victoria, a little town called Aries Inlet. We're going to paint the lighthouse on top of the cliffs there. So let's have a look at the photo. So as you can see, the photo there has got some beautiful uh, darks and lights in it. It's mostly a high key light painting, but you've got those beautiful shadows falling into that um, cliff face there on the right hand side and it's catching just enough light to make it really interesting sort of formation. So as always with the uh, Learn to Paint TV, we're going to use the more method of painting. Um, it's three steps, three colours and three brushes. Let's get out of the palette and we'll check out what colours we're going to use. Okay, so we're going to just use our primary colours for 80 or 90% of our painting. We've got our ultramarine blue, we've got our alizarin crimson and our yellow ochre. Uh, I've got a little bit of a booster colour of cadmium yellow and our phthalo green, which you know, they're good for the sea colours, although maybe not in this one. And then I've got my titanium white. That's my basic palette. And I only use flat brushes and I tend to have two different sizes. So as always, we're going to start out with step one of the more method of painting, which is our drawing. Um, it's pretty obvious there's some big shapes in this one. We need to get them placed correctly. And then when we do, we can then move on to the next step. So let's go and start step one. Okay, I'm painting today on a canvas panel or canvas stretch canvas actually. Um, it's nine by 12 inches. And um, uh, we're going to start out step one. We use the flat brush just to map in our um big shapes there now i'm using water mixed with oils uh, same practice same principles will apply for acrylics so either one's fine so i'm just going to start out mixing up a a bit of a dark tone a little bit of thinner or oil into it okay and we want to get the starting point right so on this particular uh subject the most dominant sort of um, starting point really is that horizon of the water right and that water line runs around about through there maybe it could be a touch higher I'm just going to run that in as a sort of a general guide and then the sand and water is running up it sort of comes out that way there running in through there okay so getting those two lines in I think is really important because that gives us a uh, it starts to divide the canvas up into what we need now um, this point here the bottom of the cliff so the cliffs come up to around about there okay and then it comes to it drops down to around about there and it sort of whereabouts is that i'm just trying to work out the alignment it's probably a little bit lower and it runs down there into the shadows there right so that's our first big cliff. We'll come back and detail it up in a moment. And then this one is quite a bit lower and it drops into about there. So it's around about halfway. I'm a little bit over halfway. So um, I could probably just make that one drop to about there. And we've got this one comes out here, drops down to there. And then here we've got the broken off piece there like so and a little rock there so that's roughly the big shapes that we need to map in here i've got a feeling i've made this one too big so let me just get that well, not a feeling i definitely have made it too high so my canvas isn't exactly the same proportion as my um as my photo is so i have to make some adjustments for that so if i make that one run down that'll get more of an accurate feel and then i want to just the the key thing with this one is the light portion so i just want to cut out a couple of these triangles here where the light is going to be catching okay and of course we then have the lighthouse there it's a little bit of foliage in there which we don't have to worry about that just now and then there's shadow in through here in the water and on the sand. And then there's some rocky outcrop as well. So we need to just make sure we get all that in. So for the block in, I'll start off with a big brush. Um, remember, we're not here to get any details in. We're here to just 
get that value pattern, get those big shapes blocked in with color. Okay, then we'll, we'll worry about details in step three. I need to reload my paint. Should have enough for this. So I want to get a nice dark. So I'm going to mix a combination of our blue, our red, and our yellow. But I just ended up putting too much yellow in there. So we'll work back into it. And this paint all on here is it's getting a little bit old. So and I didn't clean my brush out properly. So it's just a little firm to work with. I'll thin it down in a moment. Um, but you know that's that's okay for what we're about to do here. So that's a nice rich dark. Look at that. I'm gonna get it on a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna use this fast drying oil. Okay. So let's now come in here and you know it's, it's almost a black. It might even be a little bit too dark, and we may have to adjust it back, um, which we will look at. But you know, painting is largely a matter of laying things down and then adjusting them. Okay, so that really sets up a nice big strong dark pattern there. And I'll, I'll just run the shadow in here a little. Fairly dark, but that's about where it ends. So um, a few little patches of light into that. Now we're gonna come back here. Now this one here, there's darks in it. Um, but there's also warmer tones as well. So I don't want my paint to get that thick here, but I also want to get a bit warmer. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the yellow and the red into that dark mix, okay? Just to warm it, because it's, uh, it's a fairly warm, and I'll give a tiny little pinhead of white into that start to turn it back. So that's our dark there from what we've just done and now we're, we're going quite a step back here and we're um, we need to show that step back. Now this painting was from our recent seven day painting challenge that we ran on our Facebook page. So if you're not on our Facebook page, there's lots of good stuff happening there. So make sure you come over and join us. Okay. So that's that one there. That would, and then there'll be a little bit of a drop back to this one here, but not too much. So we'll just get a little bit more of that white there. And you can see, so that's the one we've just done. And there's, this is the white I've just mixed. And, um, just a subtle little step back there with a bit of a tree there so I'll pop that in and there's another rock there and then we have this one here so the next thing we'll do is we'll do the the water here and then we'll go back to the sky the water is going to be darker than the sky for the most part so I'm going to need a different brush than this one here Pop that brush to one side for the moment. And I'll grab my water painting brush, which is this one. So it's predominantly blue. So we get a big chunk of that blue there. Okay, that's obviously way too blue. So let's get a chunk of white into that. And what else does it need? It's perhaps got a touch of green in it. So that's just too bright and happy, that blue there. Too saturated out of the tube. So we need a little bit of blue into it. Oh, sorry, a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. Okay, but not too much. And 
and those two will just help to just grow it back a little bit stop it from being so strong okay I'm gonna lighten it off just a touch as well behind there maybe go and touch overboard with the graying off but that's okay Now I want to do this as simplistic as we can so that anyone can have a go of it. So we're just going to focus on getting the bare bones of it in rather than getting too technical with it. Um, this is, you know, even if you want to do it more advanced, more technical, you still have to go through these steps that we're doing. So keep that in mind. Um, but I'm not going to take it to a you know, highly finished painting um, just so that the beginners can follow along okay take that and mix the two together Okay, good, good. So now we just want to get into the sky. Now, if you only have one large brush, you just need to clean it between each step. That's the only difference. Okay. Um, but for the sake of filming, I, you know, I find it easier just to have multiple brushes. So let's look at that sky. It's a middle sort of value at the top. Then it lightens right off towards the bottom there. Sky is usually lighter than the water. Sky is the source of all light, right? So don't make the mistake of painting your sky too dark. I'm not going to worry about the clouds for the moment. I will get it lighter down the horizon, but uh, we'll put the clouds in. Um, as part of step three. Which uh, step three is where we start to get all our details and everything. In. So for now, I'm just going to get this sky just blocked in. Be careful when you come up to this dark, because it's going to still be wet.
Okay folks, well there you go. Step two, you can see we're making good progress. We've got our darks and our values established. Got everything blocked in. Now we're gonna take a break. Um, if you're using acrylics, good idea to take a break and let it dry off. I like to let the uh, oil paints just get a bit tacky and dry off as well a bit. So I'll uh, go and take an hour break and then we'll come back and we'll do step three where we'll start to bring this painting to life with all our details and finishing touches. So I'll see you after the break. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is to work on the um, this main cliff here and get our highlights into this cliff here and in here. So we'll start on that and uh, with this one, we might just mix up that orangey tone. I've already got the yellow for the sand on the palette here. So I'll just take a little bit of red and let's just get a earthy orangey tone that's going to look like it'll work for there. This will help us to establish our light value, which is important because then we can decide how much work needs to go into um, the shadow part of the cliffs there. Okay, so I think it's something like that. Now, we're not going to try and get it exact. Don't, don't fuss too much with trying to get, um, get this exact. Just get roughly the shapes in here. Okay. And what we're doing now is we're pushing the, the light here now against the darks. So that's where I've left those little gaps there. Because as you can probably tell, the... Um, The dark underneath there is still wet, so I've just got to be careful that I don't allow my colours to get too muddy there. Okay, so we'll put those lights in, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll work on this cliff face colour. It's a little bit too much on the black side, so we need to pull it back from there. I'll, I'll use a slightly different brush for this, but we just need to adjust it so it's got a little bit of that um, earthy feel to it. So we'll take the red and the yellow, we'll mix those in. To there. And that's going to give us more of that earthy sort of sandstone wall in uh, in shadow I feel it's a little bit more on sort of a browny tone but I want to keep some of that dark I've already put in there I don't want to lose that all together So it's just, I'm just shifting the tone of that just ever so slightly. It's a little bit more of that brown side. And all I'm going to do, I'm just going to add in a little bit more yellow ochre, which will give us a lighter tone. And not everywhere, but just here and there. I'm just going to add that in. It may not be translating and as viewable uh, on the camera 
but it's, you know, it's viewable when you stand up close to it as obviously I am. Okay. Now I'll just get a little bit of a bluer, cooler tone in there as well. And we'll just run some of that in, mainly on this right hand side. Okay, not bad, not bad. Let's just now come in and just lighten with a little bit of white this tone here. Let's lighten that value and then we can come into this one here. Careful you don't let that brush get dirty. Okay, so this comes down into a point there. So I'm leaving that shadow in there. And if you have a look, you'll see in the photo where that is. Okay, the key here now is just to I might just pull some of that paint out because the paint in here is a little bit on the wet side still, so I'll just pull some of that dark out. Taken, so I'll just try it with a palette knife here. Have more chance of getting that paint to stick. Now I've painted out some of my darks there, so I need to just push back in a little. Keep those darks nice and strong. Okay, now. On this side there's a bit of foliage. I'll try and get in most of that foliage. Okay, the rest of that's foliage, so I'll stop that one there. Up a foliage color.
so. Now there is a little bit of foliage, I'll just warm that up a bit. So you can see I'm doing a little bit of foliage. There's a bit of foliage up in here. Not that noticeable. Rock over here. Probably just a little bit pinkish in these tones. They should be maybe just a touch yellow, so keep that in mind when you're doing yours. Um, but, you know, keep it maybe a little bit more on the yellow ochre side, I feel. Let's get a bit of yellow ochre and some white. We'll get a little bit of that ready mix, but not too much. Oop, picked up some dirt there. Okay, this tone here, I'll scrape that up on the knife. And you can see that this is popping right through here. It's just catching some light into there. And then we've got a rocky shelf face, which is a brown tone. So you can see that's quite red, a little bit orange there, right? We'll get some yellow into that, and we'll get some blue into that. Some of this colour in here. Okay. And so there's a rocky outcrop that goes in through there and then extends out there and it runs out into the water there as well. So just pop an indication of it in. That's probably the main one just there. And the rest in shadow as we have. Okay. Let's get some white water in now. So let's take some of that white and pop it onto the palette there. Scrape it off the knife. See, I've got a nice little bead of white paint on there. That's what you want. You don't want the paint to be too loaded onto the brush. And then you've got this breaking wave just in here. Move to there. Okay. So now, I just see now I need to lighten off my water. I'll take this sky tone and I just need to lighten off this water in through here quite a bit. come in and add a few little uh, marks here and there in the sand. So a little bit of yellow and red. OK, 
Get all sort of a burnt sienna colour. And then we just these little clumps of seaweed and so on. Don't overdo it, of course. Which I know that's not easy to avoid, but do your best. Okay. And now I'll come to my little scoop liner brush here. Okay. Take some of these dark tones and just find some. to put in a few cracks and things. Alright, and the last little thing we need is a little lighthouse there. We'll get some pure white for that. Load that up on the brush. Pull that out and get a little bit of the red. And maybe we just come in and just load up a little bit of white paint on the brush there. And we know we've got clouds up in through here. So I'll just use the knife. I said brush before, but you know what I meant. Just to pop in a few little bits of interest with some clouds. Let's smooth out some of this here. fairly thick in there, which is okay. Um, another cloud coming in through there. Going to keep those fairly, fairly loose. Perhaps one more coming in through here.
shadow there is just a little bit too dark so I'll just run in some sort of darker sand color there okay folks well I think we'll uh, leave this one there areas in the lighthouse pretty simple little approach that we've taken here using the more method of painting and uh, obviously it could be developed quite a bit further but I want to just leave it at this point so that even if you're an absolute beginner um, you can see that this is a, a very doable painting for you um, but you know it's working as it is at the moment if I was to change anything I'd adjust the tones in here a little bit make them a little bit more orange and glowing a bit more but you know what we've got there works and um, we ended up with a good little painting that if you're a beginner you'd be pretty happy to have done uh, done this painting so I hope you've enjoyed this episode of learn to paint TV make sure you check out all the other episodes at the web address underneath me and if you haven't done so already please come to the learn to paint Academy and register for our free course um, which you will find again the link underneath me www.learntopaint.academy just look for the button that says free course and register for that and you'll learn more about the more method of painting and there's four or five different painting demonstrations there for you so uh, i look forward to seeing you next week in learn to paint tv cheers for now <laughs>